and welcome to Wag Woof Love. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I'm Christina Crowley. What I want to talk about is bringing Fido home, dog adoption. You're bringing home Fido, you're excited, and what are some of the things that make it easier if you've made these decisions before you get Fido in the door? You've decided to adopt a dog and maybe you know what kind it's going to be, whether it's going to be a puppy or an adult, a big dog, a small dog. You're excited because you're purchasing what you need for Fido, that new family member, whether it be a bed, what kind of food bowls you're going to use. Are you going to use a raise food bowl? There's so many fun things to do before Fido gets home. Getting the house dog proofed or puppy proofed. Don't forget that. That's a big one. Uh, you don't want to regret any shoes that you lose. And now they're ready to come home. And I want to talk about some basic tips, decisions that you should probably have decided before you bring Fido home. And even if it's not the first dog in your home, some of these tips are really good to remember. Yes, it is up to humans to be well-trained at first so that Fido can learn the ropes at their new home. Decide as to where the new family member will sleep, eat, play, and go potty. And that also goes to even if it's not the first dog in your home. Are they going to be together all the time or not? You know, that will go into some of these decisions I'm going to talk about. Plus, having the whole family on board, knowing how it's going to happen, will make the transition smoother when new puppy gets home because you're going to know what to do when one of these things comes along. And the first thing I want to talk about is, and talking with the family, is having patience when Fido comes home. Whether they're a puppy or an adult dog, they still might be scared or cautious. They might be thrilled that they chose you to take them home. It's that newness of them coming home and it's adjustment for everyone. So patience on um, the entire family is something that's very, very important. It's a newness that you forget sometimes, even if you have had a dog in the past or you have another dog that you're adopting a partner for. Really, the biggest thing to know is when you bring Fido home is that patience and remembering that newness. <laughs> That'll get you really far. The first thing I'm going to talk about, you're probably going to go, ew, but it, it is a big deal. When you bring Fido home is teaching them where they go potty. When, where is Fido going to go and are they trained and are you trained? Fido, if it's an adult dog or if, even if it's a puppy, they all need to go. And this is also where patience is really critical because there will be mistakes. Fido will have accidents. They do happen. Adult dogs, puppies. But when they come home, knowing where they're going to go is a really important thing. Because remember that dogs, they have to go out and go potty upon waking after eating, after playing or excitement. And right when you get home, if you've been out for the day at work, before bed, and when they exhibit the signs such as sniffing, dogs like to sniff in areas of the home. That is one sign that they've got to go. Knowing where they're going to go, if you live in an apartment, if you have to take them out, those are the times that uh, Fido will have to go out and they will have to know that when you put the leash on is when they're going outside for their potty walk. Are they going to take potty walks? Do you have a place in the yard for them? Do you have a backyard? Do you want that specific spot in the backyard to know that you're going to put the leash on and take them out to that specific spot in the yard every time until they get trained? Being taken out for a potty walk. Who's taking them out for that potty walk? Is it going to be yourself? Uh, is it going to be the kids? Having that decision made before they come home is very important. There's always going to be, can you do it this time? Or it's your responsibility. There will be things within the family, if unless it's just yourself. But knowing that is very important. Now, even if you do go on potty walks or taking them out, Having those bags and a nice little dispenser to put on the handle of your leash is really important. You know, Fido is going to have accidents and they will have them hopefully on the puppy pads. But 
know that that will happen. The biggest times that the puppy wants to go out or needs to go out are an adult dog. Sometimes if an adult dog isn't coming from a good situation, they may need a little bit of retraining. And that is where the patience comes in too. And uh, bell training is a wonderful thing. It can happen, but that is something that I would put off until after Fido has been home for a while and they know what you expect of them and you know that when they go potty, it's something that I trained my dog to do when I had her home, like, oh gosh, three or four months. I mean, it was a while. So uh, that is something that can be really effective. If you're deep into doing your work, we're working at home now, a lot of us, uh, and they ring the bell and you know, oh my gosh, Fido needs to go out. So you get up and you can put them out. That is a nice thing, but it doesn't have to happen right away. What I want to talk about next is where is Fido going to sleep? Whether you're at home or you're away from home at work, or whether you're going out shopping, where is that place going to be? Are they going to be crate trained? Are they going to be with you on the bed or maybe blocked off in the kitchen? I like crates. I like to have a dog crate trained. It is a good thing. And crate training an older dog can be, it can be done. It is a task and patience, patience, patience. You're going to hear that all through this episode. Talk to who you adopt from, whether they are crate trained. Crate training a dog can be a great thing for when you're gone for the day. Puppies, it can be a nice thing. And a puppy in the right size of crate um, is a good thing. And as they get bigger, you might have to increase that crate size. But it's a nice thing where they're going to sleep most of the day if you're gone. And hopefully they're going to be able to sleep all night. But that is their their place. That is their den, their doggy den. Make it their place and not a place of discipline. And when we had our new young puppy, we had the crate. We had it in the kitchen. And the other dog slept in the kitchen. We blocked them off in the kitchen. One could just be in the kitchen the older dog, and then the younger puppy, she was in the crate in the kitchen. There were times when I needed a timeout and I needed to put the puppy in the kitchen. Occasionally, I need to put the puppy in the kitchen in the crate because they needed a nap. They're growing. They need their sleep. And that place of sleeping can be the crate. It gives you a break too, because I think a crate and having a pet have their place in the house is an important thing. Because it is their place in the family. It is their place in the house. Where is their place in your house, in your home? Knowing that before Fido comes home is very important. And I I really like crates for that thing or their area in the house, whether they're blocked off, so that when you're gone, Fido's not chewing your shoes. Fido isn't destroying something that they shouldn't be because if you puppy proofed or dog proofed the room that they're going to be in while you're gone, that's their place. And you can know that they're safe and content and able to sleep while you're away from the home. Knowing what they're going to eat and when to eat is the next thing I'm going to cover. We talked about last week about how to have Fido eat. Eve is a great trainer. She talked about how to feed Fido and bond with them. That's one thing. But where are they going to eat? Where is their place going to be in the home where they eat? I like one place, the corner out of the way. I usually like it near their crate if it's in the kitchen or if it's near the the spare bathroom. Some place that it's not a real high traffic area or if it is a high traffic area, they have enough room for you to get by while they're eating. Some dogs, they wolf down their meal, they snarf it, they do it all at once. Some dogs will graze. Some dogs, while they're eating, uh, might get a little protective of their food. And if it's a high traffic area, they may growl a little bit. So remember that. And But go back and listen to Eve's talk about bonding with your dog while, while they eat. It can be an important thing. It can be something that you can do. Because it takes us into the next thing about play. Play isn't necessarily a the full way to bond with your dog. But knowing where you're going to play with Fido when you bring them home is an important thing. The when and the where. Because when we're busy and 15, 20 minutes to play with your dog, it's important. 
And where are you going to do that? Are you going to do that in the living room? Do you have a hallway that you're going to do that? Uh, what kind of toys for Fido? Remember, puppies' teeth are sharp and plushy toys can make a mess if that's the kind of a toy you're going to have for them. When you're adopting your dog, talk with where you're getting them from about the type of toys that they've played with and have some toys before they come home that, yes, they may be destroyed, but if they are destroyed in the middle of the day that you can that they aren't going to eat all that inside. So make sure you have safe toys for Fido. And uh, each dog has their, their own way to play. And so my gold retriever, now retriever is in, it's in her name. Uh, she loves to play fetch. She always has, it's in her breed. And my other dog, the big Bernie doodle, she doesn't understand all that running around. She'd rather play some tug of war in the house. And we do have some good tug of war toys for her. We have some antlers for her to chew on. They're not real antlers. It's a fake antler. It's a plastic. It's a really hard piece of plastic. She's had those for years and she loves them. I can know that I can put those toys with her when I leave the house. She'll be safe. She'll have something to chew on. She'll have something to, to do her kind of play with. She can expend some energy that way. And uh, last, I didn't say this at the beginning, when you're bringing Fido home and you have all those things ready, when you know where they're going to sleep, eat, play, and where they're going to go potty, who might take them on the walk, potty walks, uh, you know, those are all really good things to have to know what's going to, where it's going to happen, to have the whole family on board. But do you need some day visits from a dog walker or pet sitter? Now, at first, that can be a good thing. If you're gone 10, 12 hours a day and Fido's going to be at home, especially if it's a puppy, uh, they need somebody to come home, wake them up and get them outside to go potty, um, bring them back in, maybe let them have just a little bit of chow play with them, get them outside to maybe do their dues again. You know, those things can be a good thing, but we can't all afford it. But if you can, it's a nice, good thing. And to have that dog walker pet sitter over in the first few days of having Fido at home is a good thing. And also maybe talking with a few of them, deciding who you like if you don't have one. There is so much more to bringing home Fido, and I could talk and talk and talk and talk. But just making those decisions is a big part of helping your new family member adjust to their surroundings. Knowing these things can make it so much easier for when you bring Fido home. It's an exciting time, and having a dog is the most wonderful thing. All right, so I'm Christina. This is Wagwoof Love and the podcast for the love of all dogs. Ta-ta. <laughs>